Okay, let me first say, I don't know what you can hear, but if you can hear banging and drums and all that, my neighbors across the street, two houses down the road, are having a party. And we got to put up with it every weekend. So, so put that little stuff there, that's what you hear. Psalms 139. All right, Psalms 139. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. The world wants you to think it's Santa Claus. He's making a list and checking it twice. It's God that's searching. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. See, Santa Claus is nice. The modern, up-to-date Santa Claus gives every kid a, a present, good or bad. Our God records everything we're doing. The only way he raised our sins is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That if you don't confess your sins, he's not going to forgive you your sins. He's not going to cleanse you of your sins. And you're going to have to give an account, either judgment. Thou knowest my down sitting, only time that word shows up, and my uprising. Thou understands my thoughts afar off. So what I've always said and I've taught is be perfectly honest with God. You're not going to fool God and you're not going to hide from God. If you're angry with what God is doing, I tell him. You know, there is, in Psalms, we've already read, I believe, but there is a, a place where it says, I've made my complaint unto God. And someone told me one time, you know, you're not supposed to complain. I said, well, what about where it says, I make my complaint unto God? If you're happy in the Lord, tell him. If, if you're angry with the Lord, tell him. If you're upset, tell him. Somebody's done you wrong, you think, tell him. The worst thing that God will do is, show you where you're wrong. But God knows us. God sees us. You're not going to hide and seek from God. I mean, when somebody comes up to it, you know, hi, how you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. Okay. But God knows. I know what your problems are. I know what all your problems are. I know how you're feeling. Thou compass in circle my path and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. Everything you're doing, where you're going, where you sit, where you lay down, everything. When you get up, when you sit down, the thoughts, everything God knows whether you're saved or whether you're lost. God knows it. Again, the world would want Santa Claus. Santa Claus, the nice guy. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, Lord God, or Lord, Lord, or Lord, thou knowest it all together. So Psalms 139, in verse 4, says, God knows everything we've said and what we're going to say. And what we wanted to say and we didn't say. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12 said, Man shall give an account of every idle word. This psalm is the great omnipresent of God. God knows everything. God's everywhere. And we're going to have to give an account to what we say. What we wanted to say. Thou hast beset, and that means to uh, surround me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. God's in front of you, God's behind you. And it's funny, some people say, well, go walk with the Lord. The Lord's been where you've been, the Lord has been where you haven't been, and where you're going. 
And then his very hand is upon us. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. You cannot explain God. You cannot explain how an almighty being can hear my prayer in Daytona Beach, Florida, hearing all the Christians in Texas, reaching out all the Christians in New England, and then reaching out Christians in persecution in China. Well, you got the island nations calling out to God and the Christians calling out in Africa and the Christians calling out in Europe then meanwhile feeding all the fish in the oceans and visiting the death of every sparrow. And he knows everything I've said and what I'm going to say and what I didn't say I wanted to say. Huh? Well, that's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus cannot approach every house at once. God can. And God, unlike sin, is going to rule every man according to his work. Oh, see, you know, I put money in the collection plate. But God's going to put to what your motive was for that money being put in the, in the collection plate. Oh, I went out and door knocking. Yeah, God's going to say, I know why you went door knocking. Such knowledge is too... You, you, you can't get the whole realm of God. It's, it is high. I cannot attain unto it. We can't even understand what heaven's going to be like. A perfect, blessed, no sin, no pain, no sorrow, no more tears in New Jerusalem. No more liars. No more doing anything against God. We can't fathom, can't explain it. And whether shall I go from thy spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? All right. You know, we cannot play hide and seek with God. You can't. You can't play it. You can't have God go up a tree, go, okay, one, two, three, go hide yourself. When God even has his eyes closed, he knows where you are. And he sees you going. And when you get to where you are hiding, you can go 5,000 miles from, from where you left God, and God's still there. Huh? There is nowhere you're going to be able to go. You can go down to the deepest uh, trench with a submarine and God is there. You can go to the furthest planet and the furthest solar system and God is there. You can go into a deep, dark room with no windows, shut everything up, and God is there. The presence of God, and I'm not talking about these people, I go out in nature to worship God, because God, God's in the nature, but he's not to be worshipped in the nature. If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If you were to go into heaven like the space agencies do, and if they don't believe in God and they're atheists, and they go to the moon. They go to the space station. They maybe even go to Mars. When they get out of their capsule, God's there. Though atheist, agnostic, or even a Christian. There he is. You ain't going to send into heaven, heaven, without God. But when we are absent from the body and present with who? The Lord. So when we die, we get to go to heaven through Jesus Christ. Who's there? God. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. A lot of discrepancies I looked up on that one. How about this? The time of Psalms 139 is the Old Testament. 
Now, we know David's saved, but for an Old Testament saint that goes into, well, take that back, an Old Testament soul that goes into hell, thou art there. Did not Jesus Christ suffer and die on the cross and go into hell and deposit our sins? And the Bible tells us he preached to the souls in prison. There they were in hell, and one day Jesus shows up on the way to truth and the life. You didn't believe God. You didn't trust in anything. You stay in hell. I got an appointment on the other side. Bye. You mean you believe Jesus went to hell? Absolutely correctly right. If I take the wings of a morning and dwell in the other parts of the scene, again, I said the, uh, into a submarine. Jonah went into the belly of the whale and died and went down to the deeps of the mountains into hell. And what did Jonah say? Thou art there. Take a look at that. Jonah 2. What is Jonah chapter 2? Let's see what Jonah has to say. Jonah chapter 2. Well, I can read the whole chapter. Verse 2. I could read the whole chapter. And I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord God. And he heard me. Thou the belly of hell cried I. Thou heardest my voice. Jonah is in hell. He's dead. He died out of the will of God and went to hell. He says, I'm crying out. God says, yeah, what do you want? I know people don't believe that Jonah went to hell. People don't believe that Jonah died. I do. And I believe he went to hell. Why would he say? If I go down to the deepest submarine, if I go down to that, that Marauder Trench there in the Pacific Ocean, God's there. You know, they find in these, these deep parts of the ocean, they find these beautiful, colorful animals. Marine life. I'm going to put marine life because there's shellfish, there's fish, there's there's all kinds of, of, of colorful beasts that man has never seen before. Who do you think sees them? God. You know, I'm amazed at what these pictures of Hubble brings back, of these beautiful, colorful places in outer space. What's that color for? Without Hubble's spaceship, uh, spacecraft, we would not even see the color. What are those colors for? God's mighty beautiful in the colors that he does. If I can't see that universe way out there and how colorful it is, God can. Even there shall thy hand lead me. And thy right hand, again, that's Jesus who sits at the right hand of God, shall hold me. What did Jesus say? No, no man shall pluck him out of my father's hand. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. Those are the words of Jesus there in Psalm 139, verse 10. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. I already said, if you went to a deep, dark room, even the night shall be light about me. You're not going to hide from God. You ever wonder why bar rooms are dark? Because they think God's not going to see us. No, he'll see you. And every drink you're drinking, he's going to record it. Every foul mouth you rec you say is going to be recorded. Every sin you do in that dark room will be recorded. If we confess our sins, he's faithful enough. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth. As the day and the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. There is no darkness of darkness to God. God has the ultimate night vision. God is not going to see you in the dark, gray or green or however these glasses work. God will see you in the middle of the night as who you are and what color you are. And all the colors around you. Again, look at all those beasts and animals they're flying at the bottom of the ocean. Look at all the pictures that Hubble's bringing to us from outer space. God sees you in the middle of a dark room, just as colorful, just as vile. Verse 
For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Oh, pro-life. God is for life in the womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth right well. All our internal organs, organs, all our our eyes and our ears, our mouth and our digestive system, and our nervous system, and our all the systems that are in our body that God made wonderfully. I'm 52 years old. No one has ever had to change my battery pack, and no one's had to plug me in. That's marvelous. You would put the battery people out of business if you would come up with a battery like, like God made our bodies. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. That would be the, 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 the sperm and the egg coming together pro-life. No one's seen inside a woman's belly. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance. You know my skin. You know my blood. You know my cells. You know my nerves. You know everything in me. God knows if in my body right now there's a stroke working. God knows in my body uh, if there's any cholesterol. God knows any cell that's out of whack. God knows every cancer. God knows. And in thy book all my members were rewritten. I've had a toe amputated. God has written in that book where that toe is today. I don't know where it is. When the rapture happens, he calls us all together. He's going to call all our body parts. And he, in order to get the body for some of us who have had amputations and body parts removed, he's got to know where it is to say, okay, Toe, wherever you are, come back with the body. I mean, you may have lost a breast to cancer. God will bring it back. God knows where everything is. He's got them in a book. Thy book, all my members, eyes, fingers, nose, and toes, and were written, which in continents were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. God designed our body before we were even conceived. There was one time they said to Jesus, "This man that's born blind, who you know, was it? His was it his parents that sinned? Before that child was conceived by the mother and his father, God already knew those eyes went for, him. and God knew one day Jesus would come along and give him sight." Before you were even me, before you were an embryo. How precious are thy God's thoughts unto me. Are you a child of God? Not only does he know your name, God is thinking about you. God has thoughts for you. God Almighty, in his thoughts are you. O oh God, how great is the sum of the of all them. How sum of the thoughts. God has already planned out our life. And when we go against the will of God, he's already planned what to do with that. If I should count them. They are more in number than the sand, the thoughts of God. So it looks like God thinks about us, thinks about me individually, unnumberly. There's no number. When I awake, 
I am still with him. Now, you didn't go to bed in the middle of the night, wake up in the morning, God's like, oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? It's called the angels. I lost it. God, no. Surely thou will slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, murderers. Proverbs chapter 1. For they speak against thee wickedly. And thy enemies take thy name in vain. That's a fact. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Oh, that's a good question for Christians. Do you hate people who hate God? David says, I hate them. Ooh, that's a question. And am I not, am not I agree with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them as my enemy. Ooh, what are you going to do when you're in, in course with Belial? What are you going to do when your friendship with the world, and James says, friendship with the world is enmity against God? Oh, I feel sorry for Christians that love the world. They're going to get wood, hay, and stubble. And they're thinking they're doing so fine. They think they're pleasing God. You ought not to love, you ought to hate. What did David just say? Yeah, I know the Bible says love your enemy. Go out there and tell them about Jesus. And when they cuss against God and they don't do what God tells them to do, hate it. Do pray for their souls. Listen, I'm involved, with, I'm involved with the street ministry. And they all hate God. I hate what they do, but I still pray for their souls. And I'm still out there trying to get them to, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But their actions I hate. I don't partake with them. Search me, O oh God. I thought you said God searched you in verse 1. David saying to God, I know you searched me. I know you looked me out. But God, I want you to dig a little deeper. Oh, David, you're stepping in it. Search me, O God, and know my heart, not my head, not my pocketbook, my heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Try me. Oh, what do you do where it's, you know, God doesn't tempt nobody. David's stepping on some ground here. I don't know if I would go that far. I go, God, search me. God, is there any sin that's in between you and me right now? Am I who, where, what, and why, and when, and how you want me right now? Try me? <laughs> oh, I won't, uh, I'm scared of that one. And know my thoughts. My thoughts. We will be judged one day for our thoughts. I'm not guilty of murder. Have you ever thought about killing somebody? Well, then you're a murderer. Oh, I love my parents. Have you thought evil against them? Well, uh, then you're guilty. This is why he says, search my thoughts, right? Do not I hate them, O Lord, hate thee? Am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. God, try my thoughts. Uh-oh. What do you do with that one? You figure God would send the lightning down right then and there and, and shock David 400,000 bullets and say, well, you know, look what you just said about the people you hate.
And look at David when he committed the sin with Bathsheba. Adultery and murder. And what was the thoughts of David? He repented. He said, God, I've sinned against thee. And see if there are any wicked thing or wicked way in me. Oh, many won't do that. I do. I ask God all the time. When I'm alone and there's nobody disturbing me, there are times I say, Lord God, what sin are you not pleased with? And lead me in the way of everlasting. Bring me home, God. And in between the time you bringing me home, help me to live better and help me to live righteous, sir. Help me to be approved by you. There you go. There's a psalm a Christian can do.